What should we name the new elements recognised by EUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, earlier this year? There have been a number of unorthodox suggestions, some even mounting petitions to have their ideas included. One such suggestion has had over 150,000 signatures and has galvanised support from both scientists and musicians alike, including Professor Brian Cox and Guns N' Roses bassist Duff McKagan. That is to name Element 115 after Motorhead singer and bassist Lemmy Kilmister. John Wright, founder of the Lemmyum campaign, visited Chemistry World to explain why Lemmy should be immortalised in the periodic table. There was a discussion on Radio 5 about the discovery of the four new elements and their official endorsement, uh, I believe is, is the term by IUPAC, um, and somebody mentioned the term lemium, which I think was meant to be a throwaway joke at the time, but it just seemed to me it chimed, it, it shod and stood out. I shared that with a couple of people and within a few hours we got a petition up on change.org. Um, within 24 hours the whole thing had taken off. Obviously, Lemmy, uh, you know, he, he, he passed very uh, recently and that was, you know, one of the reasons why it, it seemed so appropriate. But uh, he's not the only rock star or celebrity to have, to have uh, passed recently. We've had a, a whole slew of them. So why, why in particular did, uh, did Lemmy stand out for you? I think to me he exemplified one of the sort of elemental forces of the universe. There, there is something about the elements of the building blocks of music, isn't it? Even if you don't find Moto particularly dynamically sophisticated. Um, there's something of them that just relates to you know rock itself and music and i think when i kind of heard a bit a bit more of the story and found out that you know this was you know a, well potentially new metal that had been formed from the densest of, of kind of lighter metals uh there just seemed to be a nice touch there that this new heaviest substance ever would come and just sort of smash its way through and present itself so there's something to me obviously about the man about this is almost like a zeal quality to him just loved and somehow the ultimate anti-authority figure an anti-queen mum if you like you know that he's just there that encapsulates that possibility of a lifetime of going, do you know what, I'm going to do my own thing and see where that takes us. So I think there's something, particularly for the baby boomer generation, that, that sought in him an element of freedom. Well, you mentioned him there as, a, as an anti-authority figure, um, but of course in the world of, uh, of chemical elements, and particularly naming of chemical elements, is very much uh, uh, an area of authority figures, mm. and uh, in order to get that, uh, that get that done, I assume you've had to learn quite a lot in a reasonably short space of time about how that whole process works. Uh, I must admit, the initial research was was, was um, a back of a fag packet, um, if, if I'm being brutally honest, and that may actually be, be kind of talking it up. It was a hasty look online, mm. but it's not something I'd consider. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not from this world, I'm not from a science background, and I don't know anybody that works in science. So these, these weren't the conversations down the pub that you would normally have. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, what, what are we going to call this thing? Um, but when you find out that currently the, the marker names is ununpentium and uninspiring, you know, you kind of think, well, there's the potential here to do something that's going to capture the imagination. So I think what, what we looked and said, okay, so there's a set of rules, what does that look like? And, and I think there was a certain amount of, of I would say, natural synergy and, and serendipity even that, that it just so happened that IUPAC had opened up a consultation. We've written a letter to them, been signed by a number of scientists saying, we think you need to think again. We think there's something more creative you can do here. Uh, and we think that idea has chimed with a great number of people. And obviously with 155,000 signatures on the board now, uh, we seem to be in the case. The campaign has, um, has evolved as you've, as you've been running it. Um, through to this, uh, to, to, to having a much grander, uh, in many ways, um, ambition of, um, of of kind of communicating science. So, what are you, what are your goals? From what's your what's your ideal outcome now? For well, obviously, the, in, in the first instance, it's getting the naming Lemium. Now, we don't appreciate that that's that's a long shot. And anyway, even if we get that, that's going to be some time from now. So, I think more importantly, where we're at as a campaign now is saying how can we take this and do something useful, which has been at the heart of, a, of our belief system from very early on. Was if this was going to be a value. It was going to be a value because it would make teachers smile, it would connect with children, and that that lesson where you sit there and think, right, how am I going to engage this class of 12 and 13 year olds with the periodic table, has written itself, you've solved that problem because you can spend the first five minutes just having a laugh and a smile. And I think those points of connectivity and those bridges that we can connect into education through music and popular culture you know, are priceless. And I think there's many a teacher out there teaching key stage three science that will say, yes, please give me that now. Now, whether we get the name Lemium or not, we could run a guerrilla campaign and say, let's call it Lemium anyway. Uh, you know, let's not exclude the possibility. It wouldn't be you the know? first time. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> you know, this is how th some things happen. So once it became very clear that we'd got an idea that chimed with people, 
where's the social usefulness in this? It's not just a, a laugh or, or let's sign this and share it on Facebook, but rather how might we use this to actually say there is a purpose, there is a, a benefit in saying how do children learn about science? How do we look to engage them? We know that the future is critically dependent on inspiring children to look at science, technology, engineering and maths in terms of the professions and, the, and their qualifications. So how might we play a minor role but an important one within this by just providing a little hook, a little link, a little reason to make you smile, but also question, well, who are they named after? And so one of the first educational pieces that we've done that's on our website now was about who else are they named after? Mm -hmm. And interestingly, of course, it's not just eminent scientists. You've got Cobalt from the, from the German mythology and Dungeons and Dragons. You've got uh, Athena's in there. You've got a whole bunch of people that Thor, of course, are well known for the Marvel comics and, and Chris Evans performs. So it's not necessarily just a case of Marie Curie and Niels Bohr and, and, and the eminent uh, scientists within there. Worthy though they are. Worthy though they are. Our, our view is the best way to pay tribute to them is to keep the subject relevant and interesting and maybe want to study about them. You know, there is nothing that eminently worthy, unfortunately, about, you know, deceased scientists. We will treasure their memory, but in order to inspire children in the next generation to want to know what they did and why they got the name there, you have to build the hooks, you have to build the licks. It's like a great rock and roll track. If you don't get the chorus right, they're not going to join you for the verses. So this is what this is really about, is it's just playing the intro that opens the subject up.